So this is lesson 2.1 from investigation 2 of the book Looking for Pythagoras. And in, in this investigation, we're going to focus on drawing squares of various sizes and trying to determine the area of those squares. So we're going to sort of limit ourselves to a maximum of five dot by five dot grid. So hopefully you can think of the simplest or easiest square we can draw is just a square with one square unit. So that's one square unit is the area of that square. Again, we're just connecting dots of various sizes to make squares. And hopefully we remember our definition of square is all four sides of the same length. So I'm going to make another one here. And think about its area. The area of this square is one, two, three, four square units. And if we just keep going, again, we're making them of various sizes. So I think I can do another square here. And the area of that square is nine square units. And I think I can make another one. And again, we're, we're going to limit ourselves to five dots by five dots. So this is the biggest one I can make like this. And so if you look at the area of it, the number of square units, it's a four by four. So the side lengths are four. So if we think about squares and area, four times four is 16. And go back to these previous ones. We had three times three. And you have to make sure you're counting the spaces, one, two, three, one, two, three by three, and then two by two, and one by one. And at this point, you might say, well, that's all the ones that we can draw on this that are squares. But that's not true, because you can actually draw some more squares. Here's one of the other squares you can draw, See, because we can tilt the lines. They don't have to be straight up and down. So we actually still have a square. Now this is a little bit harder because the side lengths are no longer whole units. Some people might think this is one unit, but if you look at it in comparison with this one, you can see it's it's not one unit when you connect them diagonally. And so that becomes a little bit more of a challenge when it comes to finding the side length. But we can find its area because if you think about this square, it's really four halves. This is a half, another half, another half square, and another half square. Each of these halves. So we actually have a total of two square units in this square. And we'll come back to the side length in just a moment and how to figure out that side length on that because it's not a whole number anymore. So we made that one and so we can see we can start tilting them and make make bigger ones, even tilted ones. So I can do this one tilted, call them tilted squares. So I have a tilted square, still a square as long as all four sides are the same length. And then the question becomes, what's the area of this square? So I can kind of cut it up into pieces and see the, the area of the pieces inside. And there's one, two, three, four whole squares and then all these half pieces, a half and a half, so there's another whole one, another two halves, two halves and two halves. So I take all these half pieces and put them together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight square units in that square. So that may be something you want to go back and try to confirm for yourself and make sure you see how there's eight square units in that square. And you might say, well, that looks like all we can do as well. Well, still not quite all the squares we can do. Sometimes you have to think a little bit about how, I, how can I tilt these or connect these lines or dots to make a square. So here what I did was instead of starting from here to here or here to there, there I just kind of angled it a little bit more. And you can see I kind of went up one and over two. So I went one and then two. One of the ways to find these other ones is if I've 
do that, it's kind of like a slope. I went up 1 over 2. I go 1 and then 2. So 1, one direction, 2 the other direction. There's another corner. I can do the same thing. 1, 2, and there's another corner. And if I connect those dots, there, in fact, is another square. And again, the area of these tilted ones gets a little bit challenging, but if I cut them up into triangles, there's a whole square in the middle, and each of these triangles on the outer edge is half of two. So that would be two squares right there, and that's half of it. So there's one, two, three, four, and the one in the middle makes five. So the area of that square is five square units. And you might be thinking, well, that's really all we can do. Well, there's actually really an, one more tilted square. Because see, on this one I went up one and over two. If I go up one and over three, I think I can get one more square. And you go one and then three, and there's another corner. As long as I do the same thing every time, one and then three, and then I can get one more square that fits on a 5x5 five five dot grid. And now again, finding the area, I'm going to cut it up into triangles and squares in the middle. And each of these triangles on the outside edge is half of three. One, two, three. So half of that's one and a half. And one and a half, and one and a half, and one and a half, and then the four in the middle make a total of ten square units. So the area of that is ten square units. Now the the part that becomes somewhat of a challenge is figuring out the side lengths of these tilted ones. But if we go back to the original one, this was one times one, and your area is one, or if we look at square roots, the square root of 1 is 1. In other words, this side length is equal to the square root of 1. This side length is the square root of 1. If we do the same thing with this one, we can remember that the area is 2 times 2, which is 2 squared. But the square root of 4 is the side length of this triangle. So this is actually equal to the square root of 4, and so is this. And so we could actually think of any side length as the square root of the area, because we, to find the area, we just took the two side lengths and squared them. And if we really want to undo that, the square root is the side length. So the square root is the side length. The square root of the area is the side length of the square. And so if you think about this one, this is actually the square root of 16, and so is this. Now we know what the square root of 16 is. It's 4. But we don't actually have to know the square root to know that the side length is the square root of the area. And so on this one, the side length of this is going to be the square root of the area. So the side length of this is the square root of 2. Now, I can use a calculator to find the square root of 2. It's not a perfect square. It's not a square that we might know the answer to, but we can find it with a calculator. And so the, the side lengths of these are the square root of 2. And if you think about that, it's because if I take the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, I'm going to get 2. In other words, if I take this times this, I'm going to get the area of the square. Or in other words, the square root of 2 squared is the area of that square. So if this area is 8, that means the side length has to be the square root of 8.
because if I were to square the square root of 8, I would get the area of the square. The square root of 8 squared is 8. This is always true with the square. We can go back to the original squares and say the square root of 9 times the square root of 9 is 9 because 3 times 3 is 9. It works for any square. So if we look at this one and we know the side length is 5, or the area is 5, the side length has to be the square root of 5. And if this one has an area of 10, the side length has to be the square root of 10. And so if we know the area of any square of any size, we know the length of its sides because the length of its sides is always the square root of the area, which is just square forward and backwards. It, it's the whole idea of squares and square roots. The root of the square of 10 is the square root of 10. The root of the square of 5 is the square root of 5. So when we're talking about roots and squares, we're actually talking about shapes called squares and square roots. And so that's how we can find the side length of any square of any size. Once we know its area, we know its side lengths.